All right, so let's talk about zero force members in a trust. All right, so in a trust, um, if you have two members that form a joint, like this one right here, like let's say this is, you know, joint D. Uh, and so if I'm looking at joint D, uh, and let's say maybe I was to draw a free body diagram for joint, maybe do a method of joints, and I'm going to draw a free body diagram for joint D. Um, here would be joint D. Uh, I don't know this force in, let's call it maybe DB, and I don't know this force in maybe DC, uh, but I would guess that they were in tension. If I have two members that are at an angle other than 180 degrees, so this is a 90 degree angle, but it doesn't have to be 90 degree, it could be 30 degree angle, it could be 60, it could be 120. Um, if there are no other forces that I, I could draw at this joint, right, if there are no external forces applied at the joint, then what am I going to do? Sum the forces in x equals 0. Negative FDB e equals 0. I mean, this one has to equal 0. Uh, summing the forces in y uh, will be negative FDC equals 0. FDC is equal to 0. And I mean, I spoiled it with the title of the uh, talk, but both members are zero force members. Both members are zero force members. All right. Both those members don't have any force inside them. They don't have any compression or tension. Um, it's almost like they're not there, and you actually can erase. You can erase those members. You can erase those members. Okay. So if you see a joint where you have two members kind of hanging out there by themselves with no other forces touching them at some angle, then both of those are zero force members. You can really almost, you can really kind of erase those members. Okay. Here's another, here's another scenario. Let's say you have three members that form a joint and two of the members are collinear. All right. So if you have three members at a joint, not four members, not five members, okay? If you have three members at a joint and two of those members are collinear like the ones in blue, and again, there's no, there's no other forces applied on here, then what would happen if I were to sum the forces, you know, if I were to draw this free body diagram, you know, I've got the force in this one, I've got the force in this one, I've got the force in this one. Let's sum the forces in the y direction. Do you see that if you sum the force in the y direction, this third member, the one that's kind of coming out here, you probably already knew this, could have guessed this, is a zero force member. So the third member, not, not the two that are collinear, but the third member is a zero force member. You could erase it, or you could just say, hey, that has a force of zero. Recognizing zero force members can just simplify and shorten your um, your analysis of the truss, okay? All right, so now what if you didn't recognize a zero force member? What if you didn't notice that it was a zero force member and, and you just did your truss like, like we had been doing? What would happen? It's okay, you would have solved, eventually you would have gotten, and the math would have told you it was a zero force member. So if you don't recognize zero force members, it's okay. The math eventually is going to equal zero. You're eventually going to solve that it's a zero force member, but noticing them uh, can help you out, can simplify your problem and shorten it. So let's look at some examples. So, so you see right here at joint D, doesn't matter what's happening over here, but I, I look at joint D and I see a joint that has two members attached to it. Uh, and no other forces on there, both of those members are zero force members, right? Both those members, are, you could erase them, and see, you see here, it's just like we erased them, right? How about joint A? Joint A, it's a joint that has two members at an angle and no other forces out there. So both of these are zero force members, okay? All right, so, so this, we can erase them. So this really simplifies the problem. All right, what about joint F? I've got two members, but, but I have some other forces out here. 
All right, so, so don't think that EF and FB are now zero force members. Okay, how about this one right here? Do you look at, I look at joint D. I see two, I see a joint that has three members attached to it, and two of them are collinear, making the third one a zero force member. This one is a zero force member due to joint D, and it does not matter what's on the other end of that zero force member. If one joint, you know, one end of the zero force member tells you it's a zero force member, then it doesn't matter what's on the other end of that. All right. Um, how about here at C? Do you see another scenario? We've got a joint that has three. This and two of them are collinear. This third one is a zero force member. You could erase it completely. And even if you didn't notice it, the if you did method of joints or method of sections, we would have eventually solved for those to be zero. All right, let's identify. So let's identify all the zero force members. Which one of these? So kind of pause here and kind of look at and ask yourself which of these forces, if if any, are zero force members. All right. How about CG? Do you see that G is a joint that only has three joints attached to it? Um, two of them are collinear, right? These two are collinear. The third one is a zero force member. So CG is a zero force member. Anything else? Is that it? All right, how about this one? This is not true. Uh, but is BH a zero force member? I'm looking at B. I've got this. These two are collinear. Is the third one a zero force member? No, not because I have that other force acting out there. That kind of throws everything off. Um, let's look at joint H. This is also not true. But are these two zero force members? You know, if I've got two that are collinear, are these two zero force members? No, because that's a joint that has four. If it was a joint that only had three, then the third one is, co is a zero force member. So once you have a joint that has four, all bets are off. What is what is really happening in the y direction? In the y direction, it might be something like this one. This one is acting this way, and this one is acting this way. So the sum of the force in y could still sum to zero. So so no, joint H does not make any of them zero force members. How about joint D? Joint D does, right? Joint D, these two are collinear. The third one is a zero force member, member F, D, right there. Anything else? Anything else? Okay. Now that I have erased F, D, it's like it is not there. Now joint F only has three members attached to it. Two of them are collinear. So now, so sometimes when you erase one, it'll show you another. So yes, CF is a zero force member. And that is it. That is it for that one. G, C, F, D, and C, F are the zero force members. We could erase them and really simplify this problem depending, you know, depending on what the problem is really, you know, is asking for. All right, how about this one? This is from a different book. So I want you to be comfortable if you see a truss that looks like, that doesn't look like a truss. Um, it's a real simple way to, to draw one. Uh, but we can say this is a truss. All right, do I see any joints that have two at an angle or any joints that have three? And the third one is, um, and two are collinear, the third one is a zero force member. Let me start, I think E right here, D, E, and E, J are zero force members. All right, D, E and EJ are zero force members. And you know, once I erase them, once I erase them, uh, d does it make C, D, and D, I zero force members as well? Yeah, because now these two are out here on their own, not attached to anything else, no other external forces out here. So C, D, and D, I are zero force members. How about here over here at A? Are, are, are AF and AB zero force members? No, no, no. Because it's not just two, two members over here at an angle. It's two members at an angle and we have an external force. That, that throws everything off. That throws everything off. Are there any other ones? Are there any other ones? How about this one? Member CH. Uh, because I looked at joint H and it doesn't matter what's happening up, up at joint C. Because I looked at joint H, 
There are three members attached to it. Two of them are collinear. The third one is a zero-force member. How about joint I? I've got two members. Is that third one a zero-force member? No, not because of that eight kip. Throws everything off. But I think there's one more. Do you see it? One more. There's one more. So I've got that those are zero force members. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Up here, member BG. Member BG is a zero force member because at joint B, it's a joint that has three members. Two of them are collinear. The third one is a zero force member, and no other uh, forces or members acting on there. All right, so I think that's it. All right, so anyway, recognizing zero force members is just a way to simplify your problem. If you don't recognize them, it's okay. The math eventually would show you that they are zero force members.